what I do is I lead the global breeding organization for Corteva. I grew up for 11 years in Cali. Um, actually getting used to the culture was actually a very, very interesting part. In Minnesota, everything's nice and calm and structured. Yeah. Customers are not always the same people and that you might have one more, one, more than one customer to focus on. And then that becomes a really difficult thing because there's such a diverse interest about you know, who the customer wants to pull you in a certain direction. And unfortunately, sometimes it comes down to funding. At a company, it's pretty clear who funds us, and that's the people that you know, buy our products and do what we need to go do, and how do we work with. Sometimes within a CG, and certainly at a university, that is not so clear who actually is the, the client. Food security is one of those imperative things that goes out there, but it's not only about food security. It's also about environmental security and the impact that agriculture has on the land. And so you start getting into a discussion with, with, with society, and the truth is in that in most developed nations, the people that are going to be making the laws and regulations are not part of the people that are making the food or growing into agriculture. Rules will be made for us, mm -hmm. and those rules might not be the most favorable ones for all of us to participate in. And so unless we're more transparent and unless we're more engaged, that's the natural outcome of what should happen, or what will happen. Some of the platforms that I think the excellence in breeding grow seem very reminiscent of the story that we went as we were starting to re redo the breeding organization mm -hmm. at, at Pioneer and now Corteva. And so it was this thing that I felt very, very comfortable with saying, yeah, those are the, actually the right things to go work on, so you felt very good. And so I think what we'd like to do is actually have people associated with Corteva to overlap with excellence in breeding staff or people to think about how we can engage. And it's then I think those people that actually drive the specific projects that goes on. I think Simmons actually moved quite a bit over the last um, maybe 10 years. Yeah, and, and it, would, it really would be about 10 years since I've become a little bit more engaged in some of the original discussions about uh, what CIMIC can do and some of the challenges that it has. And I would, con I would encourage it to continue to think about how do you actually be that one, that one group, that one place that fosters public-private collaboration. And putting that as the mission will actually benefit from the intelligence and the scale and the scope of both, both types of organizations. And if you can, if you can drive public-private partnerships to a mutually beneficial outcome, yeah, it's quite powerful.